Hello theme parkineers, welcome to our POV review of Pipeline the Surf Coaster at SeaWorld Orlando. With the theme parkineers, we don't necessarily like to just give you b-roll footage and then give you the review on top of that. We would rather show you the POV so that you can see what elements of the ride we're talking about while we're talking about them and so that we can give you an exact example of what to expect during your ride on Pipeline. Before we dive in, I feel like it's time to explain what the surf coaster exactly is for people who might not be up to date. The surf coaster is Bolliger and Malabard, or B&M's, most recent model that features a new generation stand-up train that allows riders to shift two inches above and two inches below the locking position to give a much more comfortable ride than traditional stand-up coasters. This motion also allows riders to jump with the airtime and hang time moments of the ride, which is what we're going to be talking about here with this POV review. So, sit back, relax, or stand up and get ready to hang 10 as we review Pipeline the Surf Coaster with a POV. First thing I notice in this POV, I actually have to give a shout out to my buddy Kalen because when we called him out, he moved and it just at the right time, as soon as he starts moving, the launch hits. So I got to give him a huge thanks because this definitely helped with all of the editing that I've done. So thank you, Kalen. Huge shout out to you, my friend. First thing we're going to talk about here is the launch. Now, this launch certainly packs a punch. I don't know if it's because you're standing up, you can feel all of it more, or you can feel the seat move, so it feels a little more forceful everywhere, but the acceleration and kick on this launch certainly is something else. In terms of comparing it to other launches and giving everybody an idea of what to think of, it's certainly much more intense than a mock launch but I wouldn't necessarily put it as intense as Velocicoaster's first launch. Now that airtime hill in the middle does change a little bit of that, but strictly talking about the launch, it's not necessarily the most intense. But now with the topic of that airtime hill, that airtime hill is the warm up of the entire ride and gives riders a preview of what's about to happen. I think that B&M was absolutely ingenious for putting this airtime hill in their launch, not only because SeaWorld used it to put the queue under there, but also because it gives such a visual point for riders off-ride, as well as forces for people on-ride, that they can understand the gimmick of the ride and what's about to happen. So now we're going 60 miles an hour, we're going up into the 110 foot tall overbank turn. Now this overbank, if you're in the left seat, you have the preferential treatment just because it seems that on the left seat it decides to try to toss you off the floor a little bit more here than in the right. So if you like your rides in tents and you want to feel the surf coaster, take the left seat because this element is where it matters. If you don't really want to be off the floor and you kind of like your feet on the ground where they kind of belong, um, definitely take the right seat because this is one place where the ride tries to play with you. And there are no elements for the right side that really feel this as much as the left. So it certainly provides a very good experience to start the ride off if you're in that left seat. So you come off of that overbank and then you're immediately welcomed by this giant airtime hill. And off ride, this is such a great spectacle. You're able to take great pictures of the ride. And on ride, you get to see the rest of the track. It's just a beautifully placed element in this ride. Now... This is also where you get to choose how you want your experience on Pipeline to be. If you stand there and let the ride take you through its course and you ride the waves, you're going to get a nice floater airtime moment. The ride's going to gently pick you up and put you back down and you're going to experience being off the floor in a gentle manner. But if you bend down a little bit and you jump, you're going to get ejector airtime through this entire element and it's going to change your perception on what a stand-up coaster can be and it's going to really hype you up for the future surf coasters like it did for me. I think that this moment solely contributes to the rewritability of Pipeline because it kind of gives you the realization that you have the freedom to jump if you want and to not jump if you don't want. So you ride it once, you don't jump, you ride it again and you jump, and you get to just feel the difference in the experience from jumping and not jumping because it's such a drastic difference. 
So coming off of that airtime hill, you're immediately welcomed by a nice little water effect. Just to let you know, the water effect, like on Manta, if you're in the right spot, you're going to get wet. But here, it certainly adds to that surfing feel, just like on Manta, how it adds to that nice riding through the waves feel. So credit for SeaWorld for making three water coasters in their park, especially with Pipeline the Surf Coaster letting you actually surf with the waves. Leaving that splashdown, you go into the ride's one inversion, the wave curl. Now this wave curl rides kind of like a corkscrew, kind of like a zero-g roll. It's got that nice circular motion of a corkscrew, but the whip at the top gives it a nice zero-g roll feel. And I wasn't expecting the hang time that you got on this element, especially with how the surf coaster was, but hang time on a surf coaster, you just got to go out and try it. And if you jump and you have the ability to jump at that section of the ride, you're going to feel like a salt and pepper shaker and the hang time will be absolutely unreal. So you leave that wave curl and you go into this airtime moment that we're showing right now. You pass through a set of trim brakes which don't noticeably slow down the train and your picture's taken up to the left. Now, this airtime moment is where the right side of the train gets that preferential treatment. On the overbank, we were talking about how the left side of the train got that preferential treatment as they were out of their seats at 110 feet in the air. So here, it's really nice that the right side of the train also gets that. Personally, I prefer the overbank preferential treatment on the left side over this section right here, but I'm really happy that B&M thought about that and decided to round out the ride experience as this gives it rewritability between the left and the right side as well as jumping and not jumping. So this certainly kind of adds to that whole experience of pipeline. So from there, you're given two really nice turns with some positive forces that, you know, just kind of remind you that your feet do belong on the ground and affirm that statement with a nice and gentle reminder that, look, the ground is nice, you should enjoy it, you should be happy with it. And then it just lies to you with this airtime moment right here. Now, the reason I say it lies to you is because your feet were just on the ground and you just got used to all of those positive forces that you were feeling. And from there, while your seat is in its lowest position, you're given this airtime moment where it immediately goes from its lowest position to its highest position and then back to its lowest position in a quick succession, giving it a really nice airtime moment. Now, this will also depend on if you jump or don't jump as to how intense it will be. But regardless of either way you do it, you are absolutely getting ejector on this hill. And it is probably one of my favorite moments on the ride just because every time I forget it's there and then boom, I'm out of my seat. So we begin to leave this moment with a nice little helix that goes over the station. It provides a really great view for the train that's leaving because it seems to line up most of the times that if you just stand there for a second, you can watch it go over. And, you know, you're given a nice little turn, you're given those affirmations, and then the ride lies to you again. So the last time it gave you that affirmation and lied to you, it gave you kind of a nice floater pop. Nothing too crazy, but still a good airtime moment. On this one, it lies to you in a way different way, because this is straight up violent. This is an ejector moment. This is intense. This is probably the best moment on the ride, regardless of where you are just because of how intense it is and it really catches you off guard on your first ride because you're like oh it's just your average airtime hill it's small yes it's small but i will tell you that it is small and mighty it does not take anyone prisoner it wipes everyone out and it's a great way to end this ride and from there you make your standard turn into the brake run and you are just left speechless as you have just conquered pipeline the surf coaster one extra thing that i'm going to mention about the brake run i really like how you can still move up and down while you're on the brake run just because it gives you that way to be comfortable on older stand-ups where it would lock in a position if you were uncomfortable you just kind of had to deal with it but with Pipeline, you're able to move just a little bit and get a little comfier on that brake run. And as far as the restraints go, if you don't like the B&M vest restraints, they're on here. But I will tell you that they don't negatively impact the ride experience in any way whatsoever. They might cause some discomfort on the brake run if your collarbone is exposed. 
but it's very easy to just kind of hold it off of you a little bit and just kind of relieve that collarbone pressure while you're also able to move up and down and relieve any other pressure that may be from the stand-up riding position. Overall, Pipeline is an amazing roller coaster. It is absolutely unreal. The fact that it's a prototype and it's this amazing really shows the ingenuity and amazingness that B&M always offers across its products. And the fact that it's at SeaWorld Orlando just certainly fits as it's, you know, a surf coaster. So I really hope that SeaWorld decides to add these to other parks as it's just such an amazing attraction. Now, with all of that said, and with all of the positives, there also come two small negatives. The first one is those restraints. I'm not the biggest fan of the vest restraints just because of how they hurt my collarbone, but on Pipeline, I will say that B&M did an amazing job at making sure that there's no discomfort until that break run when they're just kind of on you. And the second thing is just the fact that there's something missing from Pipeline, and It's not extra length, even though the ride's only 48 seconds. It's not missing an extra airtime moment. But to me, I really think it's missing onboard audio. I think if after the launch, you just had some speakers playing some extremely wicked guitar riff that would follow you through the ride and kind of go with the elements, this would elevate it from just a normal experience on a surf coaster, which is anything but normal, But I think it would just elevate it just a little above and make it the perfect ride. But it's a prototype. Onboard audio probably wasn't available because B&M just wanted to get the train down. And I have a feeling that if SeaWorld were to build another one, they would try to add speakers or onboard audio or something to give this ride an extra oomph and an extra little piece to elevate it above the rest. So with all of my thoughts laid out here in front of you, I personally am going to give Pipeline a 9 out of 10. I think that the ingenuity of the attraction, that the airtime, the trains, the uniqueness, just lends it to be one of Orlando's best launch coasters because it's nothing ordinary. It's extraordinary. It's extreme. It's fun. It's got gentle moments, extreme moments. It's rewritable. You can make it as good or as mild as you want It is up to you. Speaking of things that are up to you, POV reviews are also up to you. This is our prototype of trying a new series where we review with POV so we can show you exactly what we're talking about. And we really enjoyed making this content and we want to keep making it for you. So comment below with what coaster you want us to review next. If we've been on it, we'll review it. If we haven't, We're going to make ourselves go out there and ride it so that we can do it for you. So, if you want to like this and influence us to keep going with POV reviews, leave a like. If you want to be here for more POVs and POV reviews, subscribe and hit the bell icon. And if you want us to ride one of your favorite coasters, leave a comment, tell us what coaster, and we'll be happy to ride it just to review it for you and hopefully with you. Have a great day, theme parkineers, and as always, keep on riding on.